In this video, I'd like to talk about playing Bach on the modern piano. Of course, Bach never composed for this instrument. He did try out an early prototype of the pianoforte twice in his life, at least. Uh, but those instruments were quite different from what we have today. Today's pianos are louder, much larger. We have pedals and it's built to project in a very, very large space. So we can safely assume that when pianists play keyboard works by Bach on the piano, it's pretty much a transcription. Basically, we're playing a piece that was intended for a significantly different instrument. But very often, when pianists play Bach on the piano, they almost become a totally different musician. Um, even physically, uh, often the fingers become much more stiff, the whole body becomes more stiff, and the sound becomes dry and the tempo is inflexible. Um, of course, you don't make any changes to the written score. I call it often the styrofoam form of playing, uh, which is dry and brittle, inflexible, kind of artificial. Is that really the way Bach played? Well, this was a man who composed some of the most passionate music of all musical history. Uh, he was a very active man. Um, he worked hard, he composed a lot, and let us not forget that he sired 20 children during his lifetime. I would guess that this was not a man who made styrofoam music. Why do we approach Bach in this way? It wasn't always the case. When we listen to historical recordings, uh, recordings by Samuel Feinberg, for example, or Glenn Gould, I mean, this is passionate, um, ecstatic performances of Bach. I think perhaps that pianists have misinterpreted uh, the music of the performances, say, of Glenn Gould in his incredible tight uh, rhythmic pacing and uh, this certain touch that he used to have and made it into something much more mechanical and artificial, I would say. Of course, not all pianists play Bach in this way, but I have grown up hearing musicians, piano teachers, and general public music lovers talking about the Baroque style or the Bach style of playing uh, Bach on the piano. What does that even mean? The Bach style, the Baroque style? Well, I think when people say the Bach style or the Baroque style um, on the piano, it often means dry. Uh, it means inflexible tempo. So there's a kind of a metronomic, no rubato uh, approach to tempo. Um, you follow the score so you don't make any alterations in whatever edition you're using. You're not going to add trills, you're not going to add notes, you're certainly not going to double notes and so forth. And um, it ends up becoming something really rigid and stiff and I would even say unmusical. So let's now turn to the topic, uh, the, the specific piece that we'll be discussing in this video, which is the Italian Concerto, or the more accurate title would be Concerto in the Italian Style. The Concerto in the Italian Style, or the Italian Concerto, was one of the few works by Bach that was published during his lifetime as part of um, the Klavier Übung, Book Two. And this piece was specifically composed for a double manual harpsichord, or a harpsichord, which is a plucking keyboard instrument, with two keyboards or two manuals. And this is a very important aspect of this piece. So a concerto in the Italian style, Italian concerto for a two keyboard harpsichord. So when we play this piece, on a modern piano, we are kind of imitating or we're, we have to be aware of two different genres. One is that of an Italian Baroque concerto and the, that, and, and the other part is that of a double manual 
harpsichord. The Italian concerto was a genre very, very popular in the Baroque period. One characteristic of the Baroque concerto was that it had two separate groups. One is that of the concerto grosso or the large concerto, the large concert or the large collection of instruments. And then the other group is that of the concertino, the small group, which is a small group of soloists within the larger group. And so the general texture of the concerto grosso is that of a conversation between the larger group and the smaller group within it. Composers such as Vivaldi, Corelli all composed these concerto grossos. <laughs> group and the small group, or the concerto grosso and the concertino. Bach marks forte and piano throughout the three movements of the Italian concerto. Typically, people think that the harpsichord cannot play loud or soft. It's a plucking instrument, so the variation in volume is very small. But remember, this was composed for a double manual harpsichord, a harpsichord with two keyboards. What the harpsichord, a double manual harpsichord can do is coupling. You can actually uh, shift one of the keyboards so that when you play one keyboard, the other keyboard automatically doubles. And so essentially you're hearing two keyboards at the same time, which of course increases the volume. You can also play the other uncoupled keyboard and that allows you to play only one single keyboard. I think you know where I'm getting at. You can play soft or loud depending on which keyboard you're playing. So forte indicates the keyboard that is coupled. So you're hearing two keyboards at the same time, which symbolizes the, uh, the concerto grosso, the large group. And when you're playing the uncoupled keyboard, you're hearing only one keyboard. So it's softer, piano, and that represents the concertino, the small group. Bach alternates between the double manual and the single manual, or the forte and the piano, and thus recreating the effects of a concerto grosso. And of course, the harpsichord is a virtuosic instrument. It's an instrument that, that really encourages ornamentation and improvisation. And so any good harpsichordist would be adding a lot of scales and ornaments when the same melody is being repeated. The Italian concerto, of course, the concerto itself is a very virtuosic, brilliant genre. And so when you hear a, a harpsichord is performing the Italian concerto, there should be many added ornaments and scales. And when the main melody repeats later on, it would be altered and played differently every single time. <laughs>
one recreate the effect of the brilliance of the Concerto Grosso and the contrast between the large group and the small group, as well as the brilliance and the effect of the double manual and the single manual of the harpsichord. And so that's my issue with how pianists typically play the Italian concerto on the modern piano. They don't do anything. One argument could be, well, the piano can definitely play loud or soft without you know, the benefit of having an extra keyboard, and so we can just simply play louder or softer. But volume, in my opinion, is different from density. Having two keyboards play at the same time versus playing louder has a very different effect. It's kind of like having one violinist play very loudly versus two violinists playing medium volume at the same time gives a very different effect. Another thing to keep in mind is the texture of the writing. In the opening of the first movement of the Italian concerto, Bach writes this, and I'm going to play very slowly so that you can hear uh, each part pretty clearly. So. so you can see that the left hand is, has a very thin texture because it's only playing one note at a time. which represents the double manual harpsichord and also the concerto grosso, an entire group of instruments playing at the same time. Is this really creating the effect of a concerto grosso? If the pianist simply plays louder, it begins to sound like he or she is forcing the instrument beyond what the music asks for, right? Which is just single notes. And of course it does, because on a harpsichord, you should have two keyboards playing at the same time. So there's actually this incredibly beautiful dense density, which imitates the concerto grosso. And so what I do is to double certain passages. Instead of that, I go, so I'm doubling the right hand with the left hand. And then instead of single note here, I, I play octave. I believe this creates a better imitation of a concerto grosso as well as coming closer to the effect of a double manual harpsichord. I think this doubling technique works particularly well in closing sections where you have the entire orchestra playing. So for example, this passage, Bach writes this like this. <laughs> After this, that's written in piano. And so you can see that the, the cadential passage is the concerto grosso, and then he switches to the concertino. In order to create a greater contrast between the two, I do this. And I think that, again, uh, con gives a greater contrast between the density of the Concerto Grosso and the Concertino. The second movement is a gorgeous andante with a simple accompaniment in the left hand with a, a meandering, very vocal-like melody in the right hand, probably played by one of the Concertino soloists. Here, again, I add many ornaments and runs um, to fill up the space in the way that a harpsichordist would do as well. The final movement is already so virtuosic and quite fast, and so I don't add as much to it, although I certainly add octaves and fill up chords 
uh, whenever I feel that more density is necessary. And so this is my approach to the Italian concerto, and I hope you enjoy it.